only requires them to hold up for five years, which is kind of crazy. Hi and welcome to another one of our Boat How To Ask The Expert videos. I'm Jan Attenstedt. And I'm Nigel Calder. And uh, today we'll talk about corrosion issues with through holes. So apparently there have been many problems with desinkification on seacock assemblies in the recent years. And in particular with European built boats. And so Nigel, what's the story behind this? Yes, it's a problem. Um, <laughs> in uh, Europe, I'm pretty sure I'm correct in saying this, the ISO standard for seacocks mm -hmm. only requires them to hold up for five years, which is kind of crazy. Not a long um, time if you look at the lifespan of an average boat. Right, eh? right. And uh, so probably at least a decade ago, maybe more, we started to see a lot of what are effectively brass seacocks. Mm -hmm. uh, brass has a high zinc content mm -hmm. and in a salt water environment you can get a galvanic interaction between the zinc and mm -hmm. the copper in the brass and it eats up the zinc and it makes that you can't tell physically looking at the outside of the through hull it may look just fine but it makes a very brittle mm -hmm. uh, structure and if actually if you kick it with a foot you can just snap them right mm -hmm. off uh, and, uh, and I know boat owners have done exactly that they've, uh, they've accidentally kicked a through hull and it's broken off in the water in the water oh, so and not they, a good idea no no and, and they've sent me the pictures <laughs> you know they've had to plug the holes pretty quickly uh -huh. there's a lot of water comes in when you get a hole below the water line uh -huh. and um so that uh, in the old days we always use bronze uh -huh. and silicon bronze typically for through holes and it's pretty much impervious to corrosion uh, but any kind of a brass is a problem so we do have a, a grade of brass in europe we don't see this in the states it's called uh, desinkification resistant, mm -hmm. DZR brass. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really the only kind of brass that's acceptable below the waterline. But in that case, it should have printed on it DZR brass mm -hmm. or DZR mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I see an awful lot of European built boats which are not using DZR brass, they're using some variant of um, mm -hmm. so co supposedly a corrosion resistant mm -hmm. brass for through holes. But then you can't see the uh, I mean for the seacock you can't see the through hole the piece mm -hmm. is screwed yeah. into it so yeah. you have no idea what that's made of and then you see a tail piece on there which very often is a different color so you mm -hmm. know it's a different metal yeah and I mean so, that's already a bad idea right. to combine yep. two metals yep. in the same assembly uh, and then uh, these are almost all ball valves you have no idea what the ball itself is mm -hmm. made of uh, maybe another metal mm -hmm. uh, I have um, lots of photographs of failed fittings um, broken ball valves mm -hmm. snapped off handles yeah. So, so what material do you think would be would be best for for seacock assembly? Well, there's some really high uh, density plastics mm -hmm. um, from Marillon, and then there's a, it's a True Design. I think. True Design, yeah. yeah I actually got those on my boat. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's. I think they're mm -hmm. a, uh, aren't they a New Zealand company? Mm -hmm. I, believe? I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I bought um, it in Germany, but yeah, I guess it's from. New Zealand. So there are uh, the ABYC has a standard for seacocks, which mm -hmm. requires the seacock as installed mm -hmm. to be able to withstand mm -hmm. a force of 500 pounds which is what about 170 80 kilograms um, in any direction mm -hmm. um, without deformation and mm -hmm. still be operable afterwards so you should be able to kick it pretty right. hard actually. so uh, the, there are mm -hmm. only uh, the, the only ones that i know in the plastic world that will do this are the mm -hmm. marilon and the true design mm -hmm. um, but they're you know totally inert to corrosion mm -hmm. but then within those brands they have some that are sold to consumers and some that are build, sold to boat builders. Mm -hmm. And you want the ones that are sold to boat builders because they can be disassembled. Oh, the other okay. ones tend to be bonded as a mm -hmm. unit. Mm -hmm. So if there's a problem with them, you have to replace the whole uh -huh. thing. That's good to know. Uh, um, mm -hmm. But if I, were, if I were building a boat today, I would mm -hmm. put either Marilon or True Design mm -hmm. uh, yeah. through holes and teacocks uh -huh. on the boat. Uh, I mean, they're actually not that much more expensive than... than no, and I did some experiments with them years ago. I, I uh, plugged them on both ends and put them in the freezer to mm -hmm. see if they'd burst. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, threw them in a wood stove <laughs> to see uh, how fire resistant they were. They will <laughs> burn, but it takes a while before they catch fire. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you've got that bigger fire on the boat you've got other things to worry mm -hmm. about yeah. um, interesting yeah the only thing is i think is they're normally a bit bigger than uh than yeah they're quite metal, chunky metal yeah. through holes so yeah. you probably need to check first if if they actually fit in your in your place if you yes. want to re uh, replace them and yeah. you don't have the same range mm -hmm. of um, fittings to go mm -hmm. with them yeah 
All right. Well, actually, if you want to know more about various metals and corrosion and which types you should and which types you shouldn't combine on your boat or add to your underwater fittings, check out our advanced marine electrics course because there we have a whole big module on corrosion mm -hmm. where we talk in detail about all this stuff. Well, and stainless steel is another big oh, yeah, topic. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. See you soon.